Welcome, neighbor. It's good to see you. Louise and I would like to welcome you to a very special show today that we are making together here and talking together about. It's called 10 Deadly Destroyers of Living Happy Every After. <laughs> uh, the name of this series of talks is Living Happy Ever After. Now, n neither of us want you to feel that we assume that we have all the answers. Uh, we do not assume that. And th though we tell you that we have been married for 40 years, we know that our dispositions flowed together, and we know that we waited for God in His own time to bring us together. Neither one of us was hasty about it. So we, we, we have some things in our favor that some may not have in their favor. And so we don't claim to have all the answers for everybody. We do not speak with an ultimate decision on, on, every, on every problem uh, because there are so many ways of approaching a problem. We only want you to know that we love you and that we want you to live happy ever after. Is that right, Mom? Well, it certainly is. And uh, I believe in the, uh, the day that we're living in when life is different than, than back home on the farm or we should say a quieter life, that everybody is living at such a fast pace that we really, I think that it's very wonderful that you're giving these studies at this time for them to realize just the necessity of having a happy home and uh, getting along with your mates and with your children. And it's possible, it's possible. Now we have heard uh, to be forewarned is to be forearmed, you see? And, and that's, that's what our lessons are about, uh, especially you young people. If we can talk to you and you can learn something, uh, then you don't have to have problems that other people have had. And I tell young people whose families split up, so now you don't, you don't have to follow in their footsteps, your mom and dad. Uh, they made a mess of things. You don't have to. You don't have to. Don't think that because they did it, you will do it for sure. That is not true. If you will correct the things in your own life and make them to flow with someone else that you love, you can have a happy home on the face of this earth. Before I begin talking with Louise here about, about these uh, destroyers of living happy ever after, may I read to you from the Word in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. It says, I will therefore that the younger women marry and bear children and guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully of you. Uh, that, to me, that is a, a tremendous word for all of us. To give no occasion for our adversary, who is the devil and other wicked people, give them no place at all, no occasion to speak reproachfully of us, of our church, of our spiritual experience, of God, of the Bible, uh, but prepare ourselves to where they cannot speak reproachfully against us and say, ha, they teach so-and-so, but you see what happened to them. They taught against it, now they've done it. That's not nice, and we don't want it to happen to the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the way to overcome that is in 1 Peter 5 and 8, where Peter said, be sober. And that's not talking about alcoholic drink. It means get your mind clear and get your emotions clear. Be sober. Uh, be vigilant. That means to be watchful. Be, be, be careful. Because... Your adversary, now you've got to know who your adversary is. Your adversary is not your wife. Your adversary is not, is not your husband. The adversary is the devil. It tells you so in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, that's him, as a roaring lion walketh about, you see, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking in on your home. He's looking in on your house. He wants to devour you, and you have to fight him back. <laughs> we believe in the ultimate victory and survival of marriage and of the home. We believe in that. We are not, we believe it's going to get better and better, not worse and worse. And we're going to have the most beautiful homes in history. Now, don't care what the devil says about it, he's a liar anyway. But uh, we know that the home is the most precious of all human institutions. Now, if you owned a jewel that big eh, that was worth a few million dollars, man, would you ever take care of it? Well, you should do the same for your home then, you see. If it's a precious thing, then act like it. Some of us hold our home so loosely and so carelessly that the devil can walk in anywhere he wants to and start knocking it around. And so don't do it. And, and then we know that the devil hates the home always. And we know there's a daily warfare against the home. Therefore, we plan, we prepare, we preserve, and we work on the thing of having a happy, happy home. A good home is not an accident, is it, Mom? 
Oh, no, it's something you have to work at every day. And uh, I'm afraid our society hasn't helped any at all. It's a day of being very, very busy. One's going and another's coming. And uh, sometimes it's just hard. The children have activities, especially in high school uh, at night. And we just have to combat and come against these things to keep our homes together and a right relationship and to have Christ really the head of your home. We're talking to you uh, uh, and, and during this lesson uh, related to uh, deadly destroyers of a home. And uh, now they don't have to be, they just want to be. And, and the first one that we're going to, to, to bring to you is a racial and a religious incompatibility. Now, I know that I should separate those two, uh, but now you see in, in the Bible, Samson married a woman of another race and another language and another tongue, and, and they had problems in their religion and also in their, in their races and in their culture, they had problems there. Now, some might talk to you that's never been anywhere, but uh, uh, Louise and I have been all over the world. We've seen people where a, a, a white man married a Chinese girl, and we've seen uh, where a South American mar marries a, a, an American girl, and many times, Many times they have a bigger problem than other people have. Yes, it's true. So if you're going to do it, make up your mind you're going to win. Now, now the, the thing is, an American boy in, in North Korea or South Korea uh, sees a girl and she becomes very pretty. He hasn't seen an American girl in a long time anyway, and she just comes very pretty. And he marries her and he brings her home, and then she does look different from an American girl. You've got to keep loving her. You did love her. You do love her. You've got to keep on loving her. Now, we, we had two Japanese girls in our church. And they both came to me at the same time and said, our husbands left us for American girls. They said, we were ugly now. I said, we weren't, we weren't ugly in Japan. And I said, well, honey, you're not ugly now. You're, you're pretty. And I said, what's the matter? She said, well, they went off in, with, with American women. And I said, well, why don't you go back to Japan? They said, we can't. We, we've got children. And I said, we'll take your children with you. Oh, they said, no, the Japanese children would kill them. The Japanese children hate mongrels and half-breeds. And, and said, if we send them to school, they'd kill them. They would, they'd never get back. They, they, they just will not tolerate. So, so we can't. And, and, uh, and I prayed for them. And uh, I tell you one thing, those husbands didn't serve God. You know, if they'd have been Christian men, they would have stood by their, their, their decision and they'd have kept loving what they did love. You know, you don't marry somebody unless you truly love them and then you should stick with them. But uh, a destroyer of the home can very, very easily be a, a, a racial situation. It's not easy for two people of different races uh, to get together. And before you make the decision, you should also read in Genesis where the Bible says to produce after your own kind <laughs> and, and not mess it up. And, and so uh, that's something you should give some consideration to. Are you producing after your own kind? And, uh, and, and be careful with that. Uh, God made the races. And uh, you're going to understand about it one day. I feel that I have the answer. That I've never heard anybody else have it, but I have the answer to it. Uh, in, in Noah, we were all one family. We were all the same. But at the time of the Tower of Babel, the time of the Tower of Babel, when man made his own way to heaven, you see, uh, 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 God was angry, and he made 3,000 languages in one night. Uh, all the people uh, woke up the next morning and spoke a different language. He also marked them that night the Eskimos, uh, the, the people from uh, the Aborigines and far in the southern part uh, of Africa and South America and so forth. And so the next morning, not only they couldn't talk to one another, they said, whoo, you're ugly. You know, everybody called each other ugly and everybody ran from each other. Now that's the reason you have people over every part of the earth. They ran because about two generations after that, God divided the earth and there were already people there. We have people saying, oh, how did the Indians get into Central America? Well, that's where they were when God divided the earth. And they were there for the simple reason uh, that the night that, they, that God made all the languages, he made all the races. But I'll tell you one thing. In Christ, that's going to end. The Bible says that when we see Jesus, we shall all be like him when we see him like he is. And so that curse will be gone forever. I don't know which one is the one that we'll be like, and that's none of our business. I have an idea. We'll all look gold in heaven. 
shining gold. Glory be to God, like a diamond. Something other. We're not going to be like anything down here. I can tell you that right now. We're all going to be like Jesus, and that's going to be all right in heaven. Now, I first, I first thought about uh, destroying the living happy ever after it has to do with a racial thing. If you intermarry racially, you've got a bigger problem than anybody else. You're going to have more stuff thrown at you. You're going to have more jibes. You're going to have more persecution. So you've got to get ready for that and stand with it and keep loving in Jesus' name. And then religious, it's the same. Uh, when you, when you, uh, you get two religions going in one house, you've got a problem. There are people in this community that one is a Hindu and the other is a Christian, and they have problems. Yes, I'm sure, because there isn't the same foundation at all. There's nothing in common if their religions differ like that. Yeah, if one has one God and the other has 300 oh, uh, million, yes, uh -huh. you, you got there, it there's really difficulties. Yeah, yeah. They, they have nothing to talk about then in, religiously, in that, in, religiously yeah. in that area. Uh, so that really means you've you, you got to have a foundation some other place mm -hmm. to hold yourselves together, or, or you can't stay together. You know, There's something somewhere that's got to bind you together, and these are destroyers. You have to destroy the destroyers, and that's what God wants you to do. Our, our second one that we'd like to give you uh, is, is anger. I, I think anger is one of the biggest destroyers of the home. And uh, it's so unnecessary. I mean, they're really living in the flesh. If, uh, it's, not, it's not the spirit, <laughs> for sure. It's not the spirit, for sure, but living in the flesh, and when it can uh, creep up and not uh, want to reconcile or to see the other fellow's point of view. Uh, they have as much right to their belief and their way of thinking and, and figuring things out as the uh, husband or wife, however, whichever way it would be. Fits of rage are not right. They're not spiritual, they're not Christian, and they're not good. Fits of rage, screaming at one another. I, I, I've known the people going to fits of rage and start breaking up their own dishes. Now that, that, that is really stupid to go out and pay for stuff and then break them up. And, and fits of rage can do so many things for you. What you've got to know is this, that don't let the devil take advantage of you and to throw you in their state of anger, screaming and hitting and breaking up things around your own house to where you're ashamed of yourself afterward. That's one of the destroyers of living happy ever after. That's right. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, what is, the, what is the story? It might not fit in right here, but the, uh, the woman had had a bad day and and uh, she didn't want to talk uh, when her husband came home from work. She would roll up her apron and tie it away up high. <clears throat> and so when he, then he'd man, have a thing when he'd come in. A man and his wife agreed <clears throat> that when the other one was angry, the, the other one would try to stay happy. So she said, when you come home and my apron is all rolled up and tied, so you leave me alone, I am mad. And he says, when you see me come home and I got my cap down over my eye, you know I'm mad. You leave me alone. So he comes home and she has her apron rolled up. So he's real sweet and nice to her and it worked. And he came home, had his cap over his eye. And, and so she petted him and humored him and everything got all right. The problem was one day he came home <laughs> with a cap over the eye and the apron was rolled up. And brother, they had a war. You see, that's not, a, that's not a perfect way to work. The perfect way to work is in love. Leave rage and out of it altogether. Our, our, our third one is uh, regarding uh, finances. Uh, when, when one of the two govern the whole of the finances, uh, you're playing with something that's going to destroy living happy ever after. That finances have to be... Uh, a, a thing that works between both the husband and the wife. Mm -hmm. It don't matter who's smart and who's not smart. That's not part of it. Uh, they go, both have to feel that they're part of the financial structure of that family. That's for sure. Uh, I think maybe one of the reasons why we, there's more of it than ever before, how the woman goes out to work. She goes out to, for her job to have her money because she found that the Sometimes husband either didn't Sometimes she puts it in a bank enough. under her own name. Yes. And he can't even draw on it or else that uh, he wouldn't give her enough allowance so she could buy the things that were necessary. And I've heard of women that went out and worked and had to spend all their money for food, mm -hmm. and he put his in the bank. Well, You know, you're not living right that way. You're not even smart. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if a family means anything, it means togetherness. And if you're not together, then you're not together, and you shouldn't have gotten married. I mean, if you're not going to become one, and, uh, and, and, and the bank, the name, the Money should be in the bank, and it should be uh, in both of your names, or either one of you can draw on it without the other's signature. And, and you should trust one another, and you should flow together financially. 
Praise the Lord. You agree with me? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's the main thing. Uh, uh, it can just be one of those destroyers of living happy ever after if one of you takes advantage financially in your home and bosses the finances. The other one's not. One day they get tired of it. Now, they may endure it for a season, but one day they'll say, I am sick and tired of you bossing the finances, and I don't have anything to say about them. And to begin with, it's wrong. It shouldn't start that way, and, and then that's the way. Now, if I could just uh, uh, get into some things that are far removed from that and, and hope that you won't get too mad at me here. We, we're talking about things that destroy uh, your, your happiness, living happy ever after. And, and uh, I'd like to mention one here, and that's gambling. Many people lose their homes through gambling. You can't imagine the number of women gamblers and men gamblers today. And, uh, Isn't that wicked how yeah. uh, Satan would have something like that that yeah. could throw them off the, the main course, you yeah. know, and uh, hard-earned money, yeah. hard-earned money in many hours, a 40-hour week or whatever you put in to lose it in one night. There, Just are, there are men, I suppose, women too, in our city uh, that are gamblers that are compulsive. They have to gamble. They'll gamble all night long all night long. And sometimes they lose their whole paycheck and they have been known to forfeit next month's paycheck before they work for it. Now you see, that is not the way to build a happy home. Mm -hmm. You cannot build a happy home on gambling. Gambling is wrong. It is a sin. If you win, you're taking money that you shouldn't have because you haven't labored for it. If you lose, you're a fool. You've got no business laying your money around like that when your family needs it. And so gambling is wrong. And gambling is a destroyer of living happy ever after. That's for sure. And the fellow that's uh, uh, that's uh, driving at the, the at the driver's seat behind all this, the gambling places, he, he just goes home and laughs up his sleeve. That's He's right. the one that's made the money, He's and the other the couple has yeah, the man gone that owns the business. Mm -hmm. All right, let's mention these a little faster here. Uh, one of the, the the greatest destroyers is alcohol. Uh, probably there are more people destroyed through alcohol in their homes than any other way. That's very, very pitiful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, very it is. Pitiful. It is. It'll drive the husband one way. Mm -hmm. And many women today, when a man comes home and finds his woman named drunk in the floor and dinner's not cooked, he's an angry man. He, he may put up with it for a while, but he is not going to put up with it forever. And he is an angry man. It is wrong. It is so wrong. And you need help. And it's not wrong to get help from the outside, and especially from ministers uh, that will kneel down and pray with you and ask God to, give you power and to give you strength uh, to be what you ought to be. And so let's don't let gambling hurt us. But maybe the, one of the greatest destroyers of, 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 of the family in our land today is adultery. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. How, how Satan can get in and tempt a man or tempt a woman and in a moment's time that they have uh, undone maybe uh, their faithfulness that they've had a few years or many years with the, the woman that God gave them in the beginning. A man told me a few days ago that he loved his wife, and they were young people, and all, but said she had just confessed to him that just before they got married, she had intercourse with another man. And, and he told me, he said, Brother Sumrall, I can't get over it. I said, please forgive. He says, I can't get over it. He says, I am so hurt to the bottom of my spirit that I don't know what to do to think that, that she would do that. But you see, the, the flesh is weak. Our strength is in God. And whether it's on the man's side or the woman's side, adultery is a destroyer. And you play with it and you're destroyed. You just, you just, I don't care who you are, play with it and you'll be a loser. And you better believe it. Uh, you, there, there's nothing so wonderful as living right and living true one to another. And so adultery, whether it's with an unmarried person or whether it's with a married person, it doesn't matter. Adultery is wrong, and adultery is a destroyer, and nobody can have a happy home playing with adultery. It don't matter who they are. You play with adultery, and you may have had a happy home, but you will not have a happy home. And along with that uh, adultery uh, situation, uh, I think we could just include the one on bad sex. Um, if you marry a woman, uh, we, we've had a lot in the, in the courts uh, just recently that, uh, that when a man forces his wife uh, for intercourse that he has raped her. Now that makes me angry even to hear it. I mean, I, down inside of me, I want to kick somebody in the pants. You know, the judge or the lawyer won, and I often feel that way about them. Uh, and uh, if a man marries a woman, the Bible says the two become one. And so a man can't rape himself. The two become one. Now, if he doesn't act right and doesn't know how to make love to his wife, 
then he needs to get some schooling. And he needs somebody to talk with him, to cause her to love, to make love to him. But you can't do it all in two minutes at night. That it takes love during the daytime. And it takes caressing during the daytime. And it takes kindness during the daytime. And, and if you don't have that, then the other don't work, doesn't work very well. But it is wrong for a man to withhold love from his wife. And it's wrong for a wife to withhold sex from her husband. And, and so uh, if, you, if you're going to get off on that road, I hope you're not so foolish that you need help. Uh, I'm sure there's not a duck in town that needs any help on the matter. The ducks know how to take care of each other. It's humans that have problems uh, on it. But uh, I am sure, I am sure that if you're having a problem in that area, you can pray about it and you can talk together and it can be handled. Uh, but it, it's a destroyer. I mean, it destroys homes. Sex destroys homes, either too much or not enough of it. It, it is holy. It is pure. God made it. And I wrote a book called 60 Things God Said About Sex. And I didn't say them all. You say, why in the world did you write a book like that? Because God said more about it than anybody else, and it's about time we start listening to Him. The people in Hollywood don't know near as much about it as God, and it's about time we start listening to Him. And, and so uh, we'll just add that one in, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, things that can destroy your, 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 your home. Uh, one of them is a, is a lack of honesty. A lack of honesty. Where have you been today? Where have you been tonight? Uh, who were you out with? If you can't be honest with one another, you can't have a happy home. Well, that's for sure. That's one thing in our home and all through these years. We, we just know where each other is and we're usually together unless you've had to go overseas or you're out in ministry in another town. And uh, it's uh, th that's very bad when uh, it, it builds up a wall. Yeah. It builds up there a wall between I, the couple. I have never tried to, to hide anything from Louise. I've never tried to hold anything back from her. If there's something that she doesn't know, it's carelessness on my part that I didn't think it was worth repeating or didn't think it was worth being involved with and had slipped it clear out of my own mind. And, but uh, intentionally, I have never hidden anything from her. A communication is the lifeline of, of a happy home. And hiding things, don't tell your daddy, don't, you know, don't tell your daddy, don't tell your mama. You're just full of something that's bad, and, and that's wrong. If you're going to build your life on, on hiding things, you're in for trouble. And God wants you to be wholesome toward one another, and God wants you to, to have honesty toward one another and tell each other the truth. And if you know it, say amen. Amen. And see, that, that instills in that little child. If you say that to a child, that's right. th then that starts something in their mind. Oh, there, there's things daddy should know, and there's things that he shouldn't know. That's or, right. or likewise, the mother. And uh, one, one of the last ones, and I, I could uh, really add a lot to these, and one is the working times. There are people that lose their homes through work. The man either works too long, two shifts, and, and, and really, sir, your wife would rather have less and to have more of you. And so for you to think that you working two shifts makes her happy, as she may never tell you, but she's not happy that way. She would rather have you and, and not be alone uh, than she would. And that's what causes people to get into trouble, uh, morally and every other way. They, they, they're left alone when they should be ha having companionship. And so I, I urge you not to just accept these things we have said, but to think about these and think about your own. There are, there are hazards and there are dangers uh, to the home, to living happy ever after. And if you know about them, and if you watch for them, in my mind, there is no danger that you'll ever have a divorce. And I'd like to say this right here. Don't ever go around fearing. I'm afraid I might have a divorce. Well, what are you afraid of now? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Well, what are you afraid for? You know, fears of the devil. I am not afraid that we're going to have a divorce. Never have been afraid of it in 40 years. Never one time was I ever afraid that we'd ever have a divorce, you see. And, and so you, you, you build up a fear, and you're going to produce something real with it. And so don't do that. Don't do that. Love one another, care for one another, and you'll have no problem. And I can assure you that. Let's, you and I, pray together. Father, bless our neighbors and friends. We're talking about the most intimate of human relations. We're talking about the greatest institution on the face of this earth, the home that God created, that God made Himself, and it should be a sacred place, and it should be a happy place. So bless the homes of our land, and forgive our people for breaking up their homes. 
and show them, Lord, it's prophetic. In the last days, they'll be like they were in the days of, of, of Noah, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Don't be part of that problem. And the homosexuals, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, and he lived in Sodom where the homosexuals were. Jesus said it would be the same way in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. So help us, Lord, to know the day in which we live and to live before God right in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you, and, and may God be with you, and uh, may you be an overcomer, and may you have a happy home. We really want you to have a happy home.